The animal we're introducing to you guys in this video is very well known. And it's probably known as the most badass animal in history. Lions. A lion is basically a giant cat. Even though lions could be as high as 250 kilos, but it's still the second biggest cat. Because in first place, we have the tiger that can go above 300 kilograms or 660 pounds. A lion can be three meters in length. And because of its giant and beautiful mane, it makes it seem bigger than any other cat. Alongside the way the lion looks, it also has a badass voice. The lion roar is probably the deepest noise an animal can make, and it could be heard 5 miles or 8 kilometers away. The lion is the only cat that can make noise the day it's born. Just imagine a very high roar. But it doesn't take long for this roar to be deeper and deeper, and at one year old, the lion has full capability to make a very loud roar. Lions are also the most vocal cats, and any excuse they find, they want to make some noise. But why does it make so much noise? It's basically to control their territory. They want to tell every other animal, especially other lions, that this is my place and you shouldn't come near me, unless you want a challenge. They also communicate with each other with the roar. One of the many reasons the most lovable giant cat is the lion, it's because it's very unique compared to other giant cats. First of all, it's the only cat that lives in a group, also known as a family. You can find males, females, and kittens all living next to each other. Usually, there is barely any males, up to three, and the rest are females and children. The family could be as little as three lions, all the way up to 40. And the cool part is that other males are accepted into the group, but they're not that common. So this means they're not as stubborn as other cats and other canines because they will fight the male to the death. You can also find that in roosters. Not more than once rooster is welcome in a family unless they fight to the death. But in lions, you don't see that. The people that train lions and other giant cats, they believe lions are the nicest wild cats. They say when you approach a lion next to its family, they don't get as hostile and angry as other cats. And there is a chance you could become friends with them. But never try that with a tiger. You can't just approach a tiger without getting mauled. And also, when they train tigers, it has to be one-on-one. -on -one. If another tiger shows up and another person shows up, they're gonna get very angry and the chance of attack goes higher and higher. Maybe the reason they're not as angry as tigers is because they live in a family and they have backup in a way. So if somebody attacks them, they have someone that will help them. But tigers usually live alone and they're dependent on themselves. So whoever is getting near them is considered an enemy. And if there's two of them, they get terrified and angry. Even though in a lion's family, there's more than one male, but there's still a leader, also known as an alpha, and the other males and the females listen to that one more than the others. But they're not as stubborn and more welcoming than other alphas. So there's a chance that two male lions, that one is an alpha and one is not, they could be friends and hang around. In a lion's pack, only the female take care of the children. And alongside taking care of the kids, only the females hunt for food. And the males just hang around looking pretty. Lions aren't as successful in hunting as you think. Only 30% of them come to a succession. But alongside other cats, 30% is extremely high. A tiger's succession rate is only 10 to 30% depending on where it is. But the most successful cat in the world is this one. The black-footed cat, which is very small, damn near the size of a house cat. And it has a succession rate of 60%. But let's get back to the lions. Around the world, there are two main types of cats. The Asian lion, which is known as the Persian lion, and also the African lion. But the question is, where did the lion come from and what's its common ancestor? Not only lion, but every single cat came from this cat, the pro -Ilaris. This cat used to live around 25 million years ago throughout the world. You could find them in every continent, 
and throughout time they slowly evolved and turned into different cats depending on where they were living and some of those turned into lions. But let's get back to the lions we know. In the year 1826, the first ever writing that was done by a zoologist was done on the Asianic lion. And since he was studying it in Iran, he referred to this type of lion as the Persian lion, or in Latin, Ferris Leo Persicus. The reason was he thought this lion could only be found in Iran, but later on they found out you can find this lion all throughout Asia, and they changed the name to Asianic lion. Unfortunately, the Asianic lion is almost extinct, and you can only find them in this tiny part of India, which is a national park, the Gir National Park. This park is massive, is 1400 square kilometers, and you can find 523 different Asian lions. About 60,000 people visit this park per year just to come see these lions. But let's get to the African lions, because the chances of them getting extinct is much lower, but they're still vulnerable. Even though the lion is known as the king of the jungle, but they're usually living in savannas, and in savannas they live next to zebras and antelopes and this is their number one food source. Since hunting these animals is very difficult for one lion, female lions work together to hunt these animals and this raises their chance in hunting the animal. Even though they're not very successful at what they do, but they work hard and eventually catch their kill because their food source has to be fresh meat. They're not like hyenas where they eat rotten flesh. Also, when the females hunt the prey, it's not like they eat it and then everyone else can eat. Everybody is welcome when the hunt is caught. But how much meat do they eat? A fully grown lion eats between 10 to 45 kilograms. And of course, 45 kilograms is eaten by the biggest male in the pack. But what is the point of the lion's mane? It's exactly like the peacock's fur. Only the males have them. And the main reason it's there is to attract the females. But for the lion, it makes the male look bigger and scarier. So in terms of being a badass and territory control, it helps. But for the peacock, it's not like that. The female lion chooses the bigger mane because they think this lion is more powerful and it could be a better protection for the pack. After scientists studied lions, they realized that the female lion prefers darker manes than lighter ones. And they think the darker ones are more powerful. You could see the same thing in wolves. The chances of a darker fur wolf, like a black wolf being the alpha, is much higher. Whenever you look at videos of the savanna, you see the lions just chilling and laying back. And some people think these animals are lazy. But that's not the case. Because throughout the day, that's when they're resting and they're mostly active at night. The male lion does go hunting and they know how to fight better than anyone else, but it's usually out of anger or where they're starving. Like you can see them attack African wild dogs just because they piss them off. Lions in the wild have a very short life and the reason for that is there's a lot of risk involved when you're hunting animals every day for fresh meat and that is why they only live about 10 to 14 years. But when lions are under human care, they could live all the way up to 30 years old. The more we learn about lions, the more we realize that the term king of the jungle makes sense because this cat is very special compared to the other ones. 